Hey everyone and welcome along to today's quick fix. Today we're looking at masking fluid, just a really really simple introduction to it because it's something that I don't use a lot of but when I do use it I just love it. So masking fluid is a special sort of, well it's a masking fluid, it literally does that. So if you put it down on your paper, you let it dry, then you can paint over it in watercolour and it will keep a really clean layer over the top of the paper preventing any watercolour paint from seeping in and then uh, you can peel it off with your finger and hey presto you have a beautiful uh, blank canvas around which your watercolour paint has come up against. So what I'm going to do is show you two little drawings, two little examples of how masking fluid can be really fantastic. So I've just drawn two hearts and one of them I'm just going to sort of do a crisscross design and the other one I'm just going to leave solid. Now masking fluid um, I'm going to just give it a little bit of a shake before. I use the Winsor & Newton watercolour mediums art masking fluid. Um, it's slightly pigmented which I like it shows you where it is on the page or not um, and I'm just going to use it straight from the bottle so I'm going to also talk to you a little bit about how to apply it. So you can get special rubber nibbed applicators um, but if you don't have that you're going to want to set aside a brush that you don't care about slightly ruining because it is essentially a gluey, reminds me a little bit of PVA glue from school, um, it's going to clog any kind of brush. So if you do have a brush and you'd rather it didn't get completely ruined what you can do is rub a bit of soap on it first before dipping it into the masking fluid. Um, but let's just go ahead so I'm just going to now firstly with this one I'm going to colour in the heart 100% with masking fluid and you can see it's slightly yellow which is really handy, the slightly pigmented colour there. Obviously we could use a slightly larger brush but I'm keen not to ruin more than one brush that I've got because I am just using a regular brush rather than a special masking fluid applicator because I'm always keen to try and approach this from the point of view of a beginner who wouldn't necessarily have all of the kit. Now this has a slightly interesting smell. Um, it's not too bad so it's not like you have to make sure you're in a ventilated place but I think it's always good to have a little bit of natural air flowing whenever you're using something like this. Now that is all very well and good but this time I am going to use the lines to paint masking fluid along just to show that it is quite a dexterous little tool. It allows you to create some really quite fine areas that don't get covered. Now I've got a, a bridge painting I did recently that you can see here that used this exact technique so I just used a nice fine brush to apply the masking fluid for all the spokes on the bridge and then allowed it to dry, painted a deep blue wash over the top and then once I peeled away all the masking fluid I was able to just add in the lights and little bits of detail on the bridge itself. And I'll just outline this You also want to try and, and sort of get it put down with as few brush strokes as possible. So if you are doing larger areas, do consider a larger applicator or brush. 
When it comes to drying the masking fluid, one very important thing is to not try to speed it up with any kind of heat. It's not very sensible and it could end up damaging the paper underneath. So I'm just cleaning my brush off and screwing the lid right back on. So we're going to just let this dry naturally. Um, this one is already starting to dry nicely. This one, I've applied it quite thickly in some areas, so it might take a little bit longer, but I'm imagining about five minutes to safely dry. And of course, on the other side of this, I will tell you how long it took. That was about five minutes, and that is now touch dry and tacky. Um, and now I'm gonna paint over the top, so Let's get some nice permanent rows as we've got some nice hearts. So the, the aim is, is that your, your masking fluid is completely dry and will not be remotely affected by a brush and colour being swept over the top. quite like that it's like dry brush thing there that's cool okay and then lovely it's quite a lot of waiting in this quick fix because we now need to make sure our watercolor is 100% dry before trying to peel off the masking fluid so our watercolour is dry, I'm just going to blot those little bits on top of the masking fluid there. Um, but yeah, watercolour's dry. So now is the moment of truth where I start gently to peel off the masking fluid. And look, it comes away really quite easily, just with a little bit of pressure from the finger. Just allow it to come don't press too hard because you don't want to disturb the paper. And there you go. Now, in this instance, I'm going to rub out the pencil and just leave us with the unpainted uh, space. But of course, this would be the stage now where you'd get your paintbrush and start painting all kinds of lovely detail in. But this is just an introduction today, so I'll rub it out and we'll see what the finished result is. And there we go. We have got two really nice examples of a very, very simple use of masking fluid, just showing that even if you're doing it in quite fine lines and fine detail, it still works really well and larger areas too. So I'm really looking forward to exploring the potential of masking fluid with you guys. I think we can have some really, really fun projects with it. But for now, I hope that was a really helpful introduction.